Hello and welcome back to Tharic Plays Blood Bowl 2. We are finally at an orc match again. <laughs> um, we've had some double matchups here with our Lizardmen and Skaven because of conceits, so it took a little bit longer than usual to complete our complete rotation. But now we are at the orcs again, so let's take a look at our team real quick, as always, before we get into things. So everybody's healthy. Um, we've got block on all the black orcs. The blitzers are getting there. We did lose a few of them already, uh, so our development isn't quite where I would like it to be, but uh, nothing too major. Everything looks in order, so let's get going, I guess. <laughs> and hopefully we won't have to wait too long. Well, about two and a half minutes. So I'm going to pause here real quick. Uh, until we get assigned an opponent, so see you in a moment. And here we are. We get a 1330 Wood Elf team. Have we played against Wood Elves already with the Orcs? I don't think so. So let's see what they are going to field. So they've got 11 players because of a missing one. Um, a guard catcher, okay. Then we've got a thrower with safe throw yeah they should start with accurate and pass I think or no he has two level up so the accurate and the safe throw are new there oh an agility 5 strip ball war dancer that is horrible for us and a mighty blow war dancer not really <laughs> easy either a wrestle catcher and a wrestle lineman how many rerolls? Two. I assumed as much from that team value. And one apothecary. So this is going to be interesting, I think. And it's not going to be easy by any uh, measure, I assume. So let's see. He's probably just going to go for a wizard. Oh. So even before we get started, this matchup makes me a little bit nervous. Wood Elves are very good at getting where you don't want them to be. And having an Agility 5 War Dancer means that he can leap into the cage on a... Or leap just anywhere on a 2+, plus, which is pretty horrible for me. Uh, but we'll see. Um... We do have some tackle already, at least one player with tackle. We've got Mighty Blow, we've got a lot more block. So as long as we can get the player advantage, we should be okay. But even then, it can be tricky. So our main goal should be getting rid of the War Dancers and getting rid of the one with Strip Ball and Agility 5 um, as a first priority. It's really unfortunate that I don't have my Mighty Blow Tackle Blitzer anymore. So we'll have to settle for either Mighty Blow or Tackle when attacking him. And I'm not sure yet uh, what we're going to go for. Probably Tackle because it makes the knockdown more likely, even though it makes the injury less likely. Um, strip Ball in all... In like... Uh, what, how do I want to say that? Um, strip Ball most likely should not play that big of a role. Uh, because we do have, yep, there it is, we do have sure hands, but if we are ever forced to put the ball on a player that doesn't have sure hands, so not our thrower, he could push it out of our hands. And the strip ball obviously also has the effect that I need to use my thrower now, where I sometimes wouldn't. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind there, on top of everything. Uh, and he should get one dice attempts at least every time he tries it. Luckily, we do have dodge on our thrower, so that should help. But we'll see. So I'm going to go on offense, of course. And our opponent's name is Shinka, something like this, and he's playing Black Woolen Vicious. Okay, yeah, so 11 players, no reserve players. We do have one, so we can take at least one loss. 
and let's see how this turns out. We The problem with the wizard is we can't cage too closely, uh, so not the usual um, setup that would leave five players under a fireball. That's just not going to happen, which means he will have more room to get his war dancer in. And he also has that catcher with um, with guard, so if he manages to dodge that in somewhere, he could even get a two dice. So we'll have to be very careful about that. And these two players, the guard catcher and the agility five strip ball war dancer, are our priority targets here. Followed by the other catcher and the other war dancer, basically. Uh, because the other war dancer has wrestle as well. So he's going to be potentially a problem. Oh, he has a block lineman. I missed that one. Okay, that's fine. I think. But he is setting up his defense in a way that I can actually reach his... His... Um, Agility 5 War Dancer right away. So hopefully we can make something work with that. And I'm trying to decide on how to set up my defense here so that it's as safe as possible. Um, let me see here. And as you all know, it for me at least, it doesn't matter too much if the game is going to be too successful because I mostly care. I'm I I'll, I'm putting up every game regardless of the outcome. That's what it comes down to. So I I hope this is going to be an okay match, but we'll we'll see. So let's confirm the setup like this. It's a little bit aggressive considering their speed. But I think we should be okay here. Okay, we both get an extra reroll. So let's get things going here. Start up with this block. And I'm using my mighty blow blitzes here because I do want to get a player advantage as soon as possible. Like this. It's just a stun though. But it's a decent start. Obviously. So next up will be this one. Okay, it is good enough because we have block, he does not. Another stun. And that should allow me to go for the War Dancer now. Or not only should it, but it will. Definitely. But I also need to protect the ball here. So he's going to go back... And I need to move up an assist here. So let's bring Orc City up there. And then I can blitz this guy. Not from there. Or actually, why not? Let's put Orchidinal over here. And, well, I still won't. Because I need to keep Orc and mobile. Because of his tackle. Okay, nice. So push him back there and stay. No armor break against that guy, which means I am... Yeah, I'm still going to follow there in that case. So my defense is a little bit spotty right now, so I need to make that better. So fork up to here. Next is the pickup. Thank you. And now the question is on how we can do this. This guy can already reach me if he wants to. The problem is I can't cage too closely here. Because that would leave me exposed. So we're going to block this guy off. And to be on the somewhat safe side, I'm going to pull a ward winner back here. 
so that way he he might get a two dice if he manages to get a player there but the wizard is not really worth it and we'll we'll see about it So we have two rerolls, which means if we're get oh, starting off with a dodge, we do have tackle, so he won't be able to use his reroll there. Okay, he dodges that guy out first, which comes down to the same, basically. So the important thing now here will be to move down the pitch as safely as possible while not caging too closely because that would leave us exposed to the wizard and also beating him up as much as possible. <laughs> uh, pretty much. There's no surprise there, so he's going for the screen here a little bit and dodging players around. But that is what we want, of course. We want to force him to dodge so that he might roll a 1, which would lead to him either getting a turnover or uh, having to use a reroll. And he can't really outbash me. And the question is where he wants to blitz right now. So, for example, he could blitz Orkin to make this better here on himself. But it looks like he would like to blitz with this guy. Yep. He's probably going to blitz the Blackhawk here. There it is, but we can live with that. Oh, double skulls is really unfortunate, though. He is re-rolling that. Okay. And he gets the knockdown. Not that surprising. That KO is pretty unfortunate, though. So the Wood Elves do have the player advantage already. Uh, Mighty Blow doing a thing there. Well, not really. He rolled double six and then an eight, which is enough for an injury, I think. It is eight uh, for a KO, if I'm not mistaken. But we'll see. Okay, so he is setting up for more of that. Uh, the big question is how can we respond to this? And I think because he has most of his players over there, we should ignore that for now. And instead move over to this side. And that would allow us to hit that catcher. And we will be able to get a... Three dice block there. <clears throat> These guys are a little bit cut off, but I can still pull them over. So that's what we're going to end up doing. Let's put our thrower over this way. And I need to secure this a little bit more before I go for the block. So like this. It's once again the, the wizard. I'm already a little bit too close together for my taste. Uh, but there's not much we can do about that right now. So let us go right here. <coughs> And like this. We do have time, so I'm in no rush here to, to hurry this along. We don't really need to for now. And now I can go for the Blitz here. So let's see. 
We do need a defender down because he does have wrestle, but I am actually going to take the reroll here. That is pretty nice. Push you there. And let's see what happens first. Okay, we don't get their desired result. Ah, so... This is a bit of a tough one, but I think we... Yeah, let's go back here. I could set up a surf, but he just won't stand this guy up in that case. And so it's of no real consequence to us. So I'd rather lock this down. It's the approach that the war dancers would take, and I'm trying to make it as hard as possible for him to reach me with them. Okay, but that allows him now, of course, to start with that. So what is he going to do? He hasn't actually dodged there yet. So this is his first move, which means no wizard, as a first action at least, so that's pretty cool. I assume he's going to, to wait on that. Let's see here. Okay, he is bringing the guard catcher over. So this is now a two dice for him. If he gets one more assist, that would make it a two dice against this guy, but he's going for the lineman. And he's actually rolling pretty well on the, the armor front right now, considering we have armor value 9 on our guys. Well, all except for the thrower, of course. <coughs> And I haven't actually gotten a player off the pitch yet. So hopefully we will be able to do that pretty soon. And if you wanted, I left Orchid here on purpose once again so that he needs to dodge with this guy or we would get a block chance. Okay, he's, yeah, he's trying to minimize the amount of blocks we can do against him. He's just going to push us away and not follow to one of those spaces. Which will work out uh, fine enough for him. And that's... He's doing a very good job right now because... We get only one block chance basically per turn. Because we can't do anything more than blitz. And he's very good at doing that right now. So I'll probably have to start moving along this line. For now. I'm not sure yet. Oh, he's really, really going for it with that. I should probably try to get rid of his guard guy. Because that is the biggest problem right now. For he is the one that can, or that will allow him to get the favorable blocks here. So I am focusing on him now. Uh, with the three dice from a black orc. But that means I need one more assist here. So let's move that in. And that will give us this block and assist. So like this. Once again, because we do need something like this. No armor break, though, once again. Which is pretty bad, unfortunately. So how are we supposed to defend here? Well, for now, it appears to be pretty obvious. Thoros, I can't make too much progress right now, and I actually won't move my, my catcher at all, uh, my thrower, because that would leave this exposed quite a bit. And let's actually move him back one space. 
and leave it at that. <clears throat> I am giving him some room to maneuver here. And I'm not sure if what I'm doing here is right. That is, he, so far he's just doing a really good job at, at blocking us. It's what elves do, usually. They're going for the screen and they're minimizing impact. I personally like to play more aggressive, so I would have already jumped in there with a war dancer and tried to hit the ball away. He's probably right in not doing so, because we do have sure hands and block dodge, so it's a 1 in 6 chance if he gets a 1 dice for him to, to make that. But he might try now, I think. He can put one of his war dances here, leap him over, and get a good chance. Well, a one dice, at least. So this is a bit of a tough one. We are nearing the halfway point of the match, and I'm still in my own half, at least with the ball. Barely, but we're in there. So we need him to fail something here, or just not be able to push us so that I get more than one block chance. Uh, because it's really hard to break through a screen, And that's exactly what I mean. He's forced to take a reroll. He still has more than enough, but that's his reroll gone. Well, not more than enough. I looked right and not left. He's down to one reroll. So that's good. Um, but now, everything he might end up doing could cost him a turnover. And he only pushes here. So this is basically the best case for us right now. Yeah, but he's doing a very good job right now here. Keeping his players back and safe. Oh, almost a double one. But just almost. So, he's going to dodge this guy as well. Which means I once again will only get one block. And there really isn't too much I can do about that. So I will have to change my plans a bit. Okay, that doesn't change too much. But it was a good move once again. Because he decreases the amount I can progress here. So what I'm going to do now is... Set up a surf, basically. That's what it comes down to. That's what I feel we need to do here. And for that, well, let's do this. You go. Well, actually, this guy goes back here. Then I still can't do the blitz next because this guy is still in the way. So we need to move you over there. Oh, yeah, but this is going to include a going for it. So this right now is turning out riskier than I would like it to be. Unfortunately. But I hope we will be fine here. Uh, I can't even set up the surf correctly because we would get counter surf maybe. I should probably still try. Let's see. Okay, we get the knockdown. And you know what? Yeah, let's follow. Okay, there's the injury. Perfect, finally. That's the first guy off the pitch. It's only a lineman, but it brings the, brings the numbers back to 10 against 10 at the least. And that should help us. So, I'm still worried about the wizard, but we can't do too much about him. And I do need to make the cage a little bit closer. So, like this. And the last guy goes over there. 
<clears throat> and let's see what he does with this. So it's 10 against 10 again. He's just... He's trying to keep pressure up with this guy. Um, dodging with him is going to be riskier because we do have two players here, so it's one tackle zone everywhere at least. These is obviously these two spaces is two tackle zones, and then we do have this all lined up. But there, oh, he's trying to move in his guard guy. That is going to be crucial. If that works, he will get a two die splits with a war dancer. My problem is I couldn't move too close because of maybe I could have be with the wizard, but it would have made it a juicier choice for him to use him, and I don't want that yet. The important thing is that we stay in control and that we move down the pitch at our pace and not the one he dictates so I'm we are slowing down and he is slowing us down very well right now but he's having a hard time trying to decide what he wants to do and he's down to 40 seconds and he hasn't done a single thing yet so he isn't going for the oh he is going for the one dice block but he didn't go for the guard dodge here okay and here comes the one dice so will he get the 1 in 6 chance that he needs? Not yet. Is he going to re-roll it? He is not. So now, what I would do in his case is bind up the tackle guy. Okay, there goes a failed dodge, which is really important right now. And the big thing here is now I can surf his war dancer. And I am going to do exactly that. So we're starting with this blitz. And we're going to push you over this way. I'm going to stay. Um, let's see where I'm going to where am I going to move you? And yeah, let's move him up to here. And now, assuming I won't fail my block, so let's assume that we in fact do fail. We need to move you up first, and now I can serve him. And stay, of course. So he's off the. Oh, crap. So he's going to use an apothecary there. And what happens? Looks like he didn't get the result he wanted to. Yep, he's dead. Oh boy. Ouch. That is unfortunate. So I hope he won't give up now. Oh, this is still problematic let's see here I still really can't move forward too much unfortunately we can just do our blocks and try to screen as much as possible again another stun so we do have our bubble here right now but the problem with that bubble is there's holes in it that we can't stomp effectively. So let's move you back here and he can still leap in now and get a two dice here, unfortunately. So I need to do something about that. But we also want this block. And that leaves this last player so let's put him next to oh no well actually it's fine hopefully i forgot that these are three open spaces now and he could run in there but it's i wanted to 
lock down his, his guard guy a little bit more. So let's see what he ends up doing here. Because he still could get the ball away from me. It would involve some risks, but that's what I like about the team, the Wood Elves. You can play very aggressive and risky, and that's a lot of fun. But it looks like he's going to continue playing, even though it is the end of the, t the team, in his uh, opinion. I probably still play them. Well, I, to be honest, I really don't know, because I keep playing these mad games and uh, the teams whatever the 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 backs the set setbacks because i am of course recording everything and i don't want to start over because that would be just bad and it doesn't negate the the, the remaining progression he's got some awesome players he's got a guard catcher he's got a well the guard catcher is debatable but it's not a bad choice i probably would have gone for nose of steel there by the way and he's got a mighty blow water answer so this team is far from done it's pretty good he's got some really good skills so i don't really know why he's giving that up but i'd say maybe if the team weren't quite as developed so maybe the first or the second match i might start new as well in a different circumstance so who knows um and he could still prevent the touchdown that's just it <clears throat> we don't have that big of a player advantage that I can just relax and take a breather. We still have to try our best to, to make some pro progress here. And he could prevent that, so this is going to be... Uh, I was thinking if we could make that, in case we only pushed, if we could get a second block, but not without going for it. So I'm just going to do it like this. And we actually do push him. So push him to there and follow. And now I'm going to get a bit more aggressive with my setup. And this is his station, the, the player he wants to, uh, to, to pass through if he manages to get the ball. Like uh, this would be the other one. So we are going to mark them up. And, yeah, he's going to stay where he is. So, move up one space again. Put this guy to over here and him to there. But this really means I need to start moving, starting next turn. Otherwise, I won't be able to score. We still have ways to go. We do have some players in scoring range already, at least in theory. But that would include a handoff, something I don't really want to do. So, I don't know. But we are thinning him out. We're doing a good job at locking down the important players. And let's just see. He shouldn't actually not have pulled this guy back. Okay, from what he's doing now, it makes sense. <clears throat> but still, we'll, we'll see. He's going for the standard elf screen, so he should put another player over here. And two more right there, basically. So it's two spaces in between always, and even if I blitz, I can't move on. And that is what he's setting up right now. So I will be able to move over to this side while trying to um, create more openings for myself. He's docking down Orkun. And he... Oh! That is bad. That is really, really bad. So we're... At 9 against 9 again, and I'm out of my tackle player. So that's not good. That's really, really bad. He's gotten some really good block rolls um, against armor value 9. And he doesn't even need the mighty blow he has on that guy. He just rolled a 10 and another 10. So, Or maybe that includes the mighty blow already. I don't know if that's actually displayed, if it's uh, added on there. 
I don't think it is, so it's probably the correct roll. So that just means I need to move down this way now. And that's a failed dodge. Is he going to... He is going to use his reroll. Okay. And if you can move that guy back here as well now. Things are looking very bad for me. Okay. Awesome. That was really important. Holy crap. Not good. So how do we proceed from here? That's the big question right now. I am going to try... Oh no, I can't with him. That is pretty bad. Not without going for it, at least. So I'll need to knock down this guy, unfortunately. Let's use you for that. Okay, push him over that way and we will of course follow. And this might get him to use the wizard now and there is not much I can do about that. I need to move and I need to move now. So this is a going for it. Let's set up one more player over there. And I should try to get the Blitzer into the correct position. First. Nope. Not a good start. We do have the reroll for that, but it's still not good. Okay, thank you. I would have liked to do a second one, because we want more players in scoring range. But we really can't afford to. Um, so what I'll end up doing is putting the last guy here. And let's try for this one dice. It might end up a mistake, and it does, of course. Because now he has a free player down there, which he could pass the ball to in case something goes wrong. The important part here is, he's down to no rerolls, and now he has to decide if he wants to use the wizard. He could. And there goes the fireball, and he only hits the mighty blow player. So that's almost okay. Um, this is a two, no this is not a two dice. Um, he could knock down this guy. So we'll see. It's two going for it with, with our thrower, unfortunately. So I think I'm going to try a handoff to Orchid, assuming he remains standing at the end. And then he's going to run it. It's gotten closer than I wanted to, and it's probably due to my inexperience in playing with orcs against an elf team. And wood elves on top of it, they, who are very fast. They're a really fast team. So, I don't know uh, what I should have done differently here. Getting two players knocked out certainly didn't help. And elves still can perform very well, even when they're down a player or two. Okay, this is not good, so he's probably trying to blitz Orchid. We'll see. So, we only have three players in scoring range right now. Which is obviously not a lot. Okay, he knocks down the orc. This is still fine. It doesn't really impact my plans too much. It depends on what he ends up doing next to our... He's probably going to try and 
blitz the thrower. No? Okay, he's moving that guy back. That is inconsequential to us right now, if he does that. Uh, he can't really reach a player that would be impacted by that. And that's the move that is the problem here. That is going to be a big problem. Oh, is that going to... Still, this is right now a very big deal. So how do I do this best now? First of all, stand him up because it doesn't really matter. Um, so if I play my cards right here, we. Uh, <laughs> Okay, I need to see how this block goes first. Because I'm trying to decide on what to do here, and that will decide something. And that means I won't be able to do what I want to do, so I'll have to do the harder thing, unfortunately. So we won't get around blitzing here. Okay, that does work, luckily. And I'm going to stay. So the thing is here, I either need to do a throw or a handoff and to going for. Well, the two going for it needs to hand. I'm, I'm going to do the handoff, of course. Uh, there's no question about that, but it's riskier than I would like by a long shot. Oh boy. So let's do this. Okay, we caught the ball. And now it's just the manner of getting in the touchdown zone. Pretty please. Okay, that was really close, but it worked in the end. That's the important bit here. Oh, wow. That had me worried there. And our KL player comes back, that's good, so we're back up to 11 players. And the problem here is he might know how to do a one dice, a uh, one turn touchdown. Even if he says otherwise, I won't risk it, so we are pulling everyone back. Nope, not to there, back to here. But leveling up Orchid is really good, assuming we don't get an abnormal level up. He will end up getting Tackle again. So I'm pretty happy about that. And there he will get his turn 8. And let's just see. So the wizard is gone which is going to be very helpful. They're faster than we are, by a lot. Um, their slowest players have movement allowance of 7, and our fastest have 6, and we have only 4 of them. Well, 3, actually, because one is injured. And it's the most important one as well. So this is going to get, even though he said he's not that skilled on attack, it might still get very problematic, so we'll see. But it doesn't really look like that he's going to set up for a one-turner. Maybe he doesn't know how. Uh, it's fine with me either way. So let's just see. We do have the player advantage, which should help us. But as you have seen, 
even with nine players, uh, Wood Elves can still do a lot. I mean, it was nine against nine or nine against ten for a longer time, but still, he did a good job. So let's see what he does on offense. It's different there, of course, but it's also easier for him to break through because he's more agile than we are and faster. So that's going to play a big role. And I probably made some errors here. I, I, In the end, I baited out the wizard in a really dangerous position, and we got lucky that it only hit one player and not more than one, and that the one player only got stunned and not injured. So all in all, I got pretty lucky there. And now both teams gain a turn. And that is horrible, because that could actually allow him to score this half. And now I'm pretty badly set up here. Well, you know what I mean. Okay, starts with that. Okay, so next will be the War Dancer here. Against our Strength 4 Orc. Another armor break? Or not? Oh. Looks like not. That's good. And this block guy is going to go last. Oh no, he's using the catcher next. So he should push us there so that he get more gets more blocks. So how is this going to progress from here? Okay, another push. Probably to over here. And there. And that way his catcher will be able to do one more block. He gets enough assists to try that. If he wants to. He might want to go for the ball first, though. And he gets the knockdown, okay. That last assist was a little bit redundant. So... I think he might have just pushed this guy into scoring range for next turn. Which worries me, because I can't reach him. With any of my players. That riot really is a problem right now. And he's making it very difficult for me to, to do something here. But it would need, once again, a lot of stuff to work for him to get that. It's not impossible, but it's not too likely either. With the amount of rolls he needs to do there. Without a going for it, uh, without a reroll, uh, if he gets the touchdown, there's nothing I can do. Literally. <laughs> okay, he's already going for a pass, and he loses the ball with that. So he needs to do another pickup next turn. So there's only really one good block I can do, and that's this one. That's pretty much it, and I'm just going to push him and stay. There's really not much else for me to do there. So what I'm debating now is if, if I want to try to get a player here, but that would mean giving up a spot that he would need to always do a two dice uh, against, but he could just blitz me, and he need, he would just leap over this, which is uh, the thing. So I'm trying to decide here if it's worth it or not to risk that. 
I think it is, so let's try. Because otherwise he's going to leap over us. Just like that. Oh yeah, this didn't work, because I'm stupid. So I need to do this differently. So this guy... I, he's got only movement allowance of... Of, uh, of five, so not six, so he can't reach there. And we fall down on the first going for it again. Which means... I will not move him now. He will stay there. It should still serve its purpose. He will either have to leap or dodge by us and it will force more rolls on him. So let's just see. The problem is, well, actually not. He can't chain push this guy any further right now from the way he set things up. He could have moved players into position to move this guy further up the pitch and make this guy's position um, moot. He didn't. He needs to put a guy here. Then he can block this guy and push him over. He wants his water answer to get closer. So this is really tense. The riot. Yep, but he actually does what I what I said he needed to do. So he's seeing it as well. And with the blitz and more positioning, that is pretty good though. So he won't have reroll, so he can't push this guy anymore. He can still get a chain push, but for that he would need to well, actually, he would only need to blitz from here. And push him like this. So this is not really helpful. It's the last turn anyways. The thing is, the pass is not a short one. So he needs to make the pass on top of everything. He does have a safe pass and accurate and all those nice things. And pass. <laughs> safe throw, that's the word. Oh, he's actually going for it. So, <laughs> he knows what he's doing there. Yep, he's going to take the knockdown, of course, because he doesn't need to push anymore. Push himself to there. No. So he's taking the distance and just wants to avoid the dodge. Uh, the other way around would have been better, actually, because he does have the dodge reroll, where he won't get a reroll for a failed going for it. So it doesn't really... only, well, in regard of the catch it makes sense, but still, I don't know. So, that worked. And now he can just leap and score, and there's nothing I can do about that. And he makes it. Yep, there's nothing I could have done about that. He, the riot gave him that chance, and if he gets all of those rolls without a reroll needed, there's just nothing I can do. So, that's just it, pretty much. So, let's see how things go from here. He's on attack now, which obviously is not good for us. So we'll have to try and keep him from scoring as much as possible. And let's set up like this. Uh, yeah, put these up one. The thrower can go back a little bit further, and that should be fine. So, he needs to overcome our strength 4 players, which he can do with the assists he has. 
and we do I did set up it a little bit more defensively here these guys at least a little bit further back in case he manages to break through already I do want a player that can I pull that I can pull back further So what I'm hoping for now is that I will be able to escalate the player disadvantage a little bit more. So maybe knock out one or two more players at least. Um, because their offensive potential is still very big. So we'll see. And he has three very fast players still on the pitch. Both of his catchers and his war dancer have movement allowance of eight. So yeah. Not good. Six players with MA7, MA7, and three with MA8. Let's just see how this turns out. A high kick might give him the chance to. Yep, he already catches it. So no pickup needed, unfortunately. That would have been my preferred outcome. If he starts with blocks, he should start with this one. It's better than the wrestle. He starts with one without any skills. That's risky, at the at least. Okay, so... The biggest thing here is he most likely won't be able to protect his ball too much in case of a cage, but he probably don't really want to cage. He can keep his ball carrier back and just pass the ball when the time comes or make a handoff to a player that he keeps in range and then tries to run it down the pitch further. So he has multiple options here to, to keep the ball safe and I will have to put at least one player close to him or try to get close to him to get to the ball while also keeping up a defense that he can't run around and even with a two-player advantage this probably will be challenging and I can't really focus my blitzes on his dodge guys anymore at least not too much because I don't have tackle anymore Okay. So if he's not careful, I will serve another of his players. That's just it. So let's see what he ends up doing here. And he is actually, is he? He's thinking about it. Okay, he's not. I probably could not have served that guy if he had put it there, but I might have tried. So now he's going to do that okay he gets it he's probably going to push us back here yes and no armor break this time the question is where will he go with this guy is he going to move him back he's going aggressive with him so that will allow me to set up a surf but he could just leap out And this is fine for now. Oh, he's going for it. That's a one. Okay, but he's already down a reroll already. So that should be pretty helpful. Where is he going with his ball carrier? Yep, he's putting him in a position where I won't be able to reach him. So I would have to blitz through, but I can't afford to do that. But I do have some ideas, of course. So let's focus on that for now and see what we can do afterwards. So first off, we need to lock down the catcher, of course. Then we'll move... Well, yeah move him over just so that we have a player here for him to to be concerned about he moves up as well
So I'm putting a lot against the Catcher right now. But I am going to blitz the War Dancer, of course. And I'm probably not going even to set up a... Well, I should. The problem is he can use Leap to get out of that. That's the big problem about that right now. And I should have pulled over these two players first. That was a misplay. And now the question is, do I set up against that, which would mean putting this Black Oak back here, or not? Uh, but I think it is the best choice. We're very much on this side right now, which is what I wanted to avoid, but we do have some players here, and these two Black Orcs in the backfield. So I think we should be okay, and now he can't leap out. At least not forward. So we'll have to wait and see what he does with this. Because there is this hole here. It's quite gaping. I didn't want to do the going for it to lock this down. In hindsight, I probably should have. But you... That's a mistake I... I had to make, apparently. So, I don't know. This could be good, this could be bad. It probably is bad, now that I look at the situation. It's going to make it very difficult for us to defend this further, I think. At least this is good, because he can't really dodge this guy. At least not reliably. He probably won't block here, but he is setting up to move on to there. I should be able to react to that. Um, block away him, move him over, move him over as well. Uh, do a blitz here. All those kinds of things. And he also has to get away with his war dancer. Is he doing that with the going for it? He is. Why? That's his second reroll gone. That is really lucky for us. So he's out of rerolls. Two turns into the half already. So every failed dodge will end the turn for him. So we're waiting for opponent and please don't tell me just now disconnected or gave up or something like that. Okay, he's back. Oh, okay. Experience has taught us that people tend to do that when things don't go their way for quite a while. So I don't want to make those assumptions, but I had no other choice right now to make that for now. It just took a little bit too long for me to not be worried about it. So I do have some plans here. Oh, he's actually going for a one dice, which is not going to be enough here. So what else is he going to do? Oh, he's dodging into two tackle zones, really? And dodging into two more tackle zones? That's ballsy. He's running out of time, though, and is he going to be able to protect this guy? He ran out of time before he could move him. So that is very helpful. Oh. Okay, let's do this. He's just going to move down here, just in case. So this is my ideal setup right now. Because... Oh yeah, and it is already a 2 dice. It will give us another block chance. In case we don't get the knockdown on the first attempt. Which is what ends up happening. Happening. 
So push you there and follow. That should make this a three dice. And that is indeed good enough. Oh, but I probably should have taken the the both down result. Okay, the scatter is not going outside. Okay, it's going over there. That we can work with, hopefully. Um, so this is a tough decision right now. I need to work on this. Let's see. Put you there. I can't get my ball carrier free. Uh, my my blitzer f thrower. That's the word. Um. Wait. So I should push him away over to this side. Next we have him. Okay, we don't get a knockdown against this war dancer, unfortunately. So I can't really reach the ball. But I will get another chance against the war dancer here. Another push. And I'm actually going to... Oh, I don't like this. Uh, yeah, we're staying. But we do have these still open, so let's do that. No armor breaks whatsoever, unfortunately. So, let's see. So, is he going to try and pick up the ball in one tackle zone? He might, and that's what I wanted to prevent. But I couldn't get my players there. So, we'll see. Hmm, this is a weird positioning right now. And it's... At points like these, I really notice that I'm very used to thinking about a perspective from my own view. So if the pitch would be turned around, I probably would be in a better position to see what he could do. But I'm not. So I am not really sure on what his best approach here would be now. I'd probably try to get rid of the Blitzer. Um, but that would take a lot of resources that might end up served next turn, so I'm really not sure. He makes the pickup. That's the big thing here right now. And he makes the other ones as well. So that's, once again, if he doesn't even have a reroll and he makes all of his rolls, what the hell am I supposed to do there? So now I'm in a lot of trouble because he can get the ball to this blind man, move him over here first. Okay, at least he... yeah, he's going to throw the ball now. It's our only intercept. He fails the catch though. That is so lucky for us right now. That was extremely important. Okay. How do we do this? We put... One line orc here. Next, we're blitzing this guy down. We 
which will allow us to push this guy over here. It's fine like this. Once again, no armor break. And I wanted to push him over here first, um, in case we only pushed him, but since we didn't, I'm going to be a little bit greedy and get this second block, which does end up working, so I'm happy about it. We should also try to knock down the War Dancer, and we actually do. Wow, that was pretty amazing. Okay, he's at least out for a turn. So next is going to be the pickup. And now I can form a cage. Oh yeah, but it's not a good cage because I made a mistake. It's a good enough cage, let's say it like this. Um, put you back here. Black Orc over there. And like so. And then we have one block remaining. So I'm going to hit this guy. And knock him down. Okay. And we get a KO. Perfect. So this should be it now, I think. I'm not sure he will be able to to prevent us from scoring now. He just had very bad rolls in the beginning there with his two failed uh, going for it, I think, both times. Or was it a dodge once? Something like this. He lost uh, He lost his, f two, his two re rolls basically right away in the second half and that just makes it very difficult for him to do anything else. So what I might have done is dodge this guy over here, bring this guy to here and not just stand him up, blitz, and then do something like this, but oh, that is... It's problematic for him now, to say the least. It's really not much he can do anymore about this. And I do get very good rolls right now, which is making things... Oh, and that's a dead catcher. So he's really in a bad position. It's just not looking good for him. Whatsoever. So there is this lineman that I could try to get the the touchdown to, maybe. It's not that I enjoy making these injuries. I don't want to destroy other people's teams, at least not usually. Uh, yeah, let's stay here. Holy crap, now I'm really rolling out the injuries here. Hey, there's at least, in this case, at least only a badly hurt. And it's at least, this is something I can live with. He said he would concede 
I mean, I don't really care that I, I... I probably would even lose out on SPP, but I'd rather play the match till the end. I can understand, because he's going to reroll the team anyways, um, that he doesn't really want to do that. Yep. And in this case, I do understand it, actually. He talked about it first. He has good reasons, and he's going to rebuild the team anyways, make it new. So I'm I'm okay with this. I mean, I do lose out on SPP here, because I don't get the next touchdown. I will get the MVP, the second one, and more winnings, but it's... I don't know. I would rather play this till the end. And it's just that I've, out of the last five matches, we've gotten three concedes now, including this one, basically. So if we count this one as one of the five. So yeah, it's basically, he played very well on defense, so... I mean, this would not leave me to, to do this, but I can understand if he doesn't want to do that. It's still unfortunate and I'm sad about it, and I would hope he would play until the end, but he's got some good reasons at least, and that's the problem in the matchmaking system. It, there's, if my teams are more developed now, so I really don't have, I have an incentive to keep them alive and play them longer. But it's okay, we won't really do anything with that treasury anyway. So Awakening is going to level up. And our thrower got another MVP. So that was a lot of SPP. But pretty concentrated. <laughs> so let's see what the turnout is. And, oh wow, actually both of our blitzes. That is pretty awesome. Let's roll some dice here. That's a normal level up, so we are going to go with tackle on him as well. And then we have another blitzer with a 10. And because I got yelled at last time for not doing it, this time around I'm going to take the plus movement allowance. And I do see the reason behind that, and I do admit it probably was a mistake to not take it the first time around, but now I am. So please don't yell at me anymore. <laughs> it gives us uh, the best example would be the wood elves here they are all their players are faster than our fastest our top speed is six they start at seven so having a player that has seven as well is so valuable there so yeah that's what we're going for so that will end the episode for today i'm of course going to spend the money again somewhere we'll see um but I hope you still enjoyed this episode. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a second Orc match now after this concede because the match was actually pretty long, I think. We'll see. Maybe in terms of fairness because we've did 2-2 two, two, and now 1. Uh, we might do a second Orc match and then start the rotation new. We'll see. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please leave a like and a comment. And if you want to see me play more Blood Bowl 2, just subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, thanks for watching. I hope that you tune in next time and have a nice day. Bye.